Long ago, as now, sugar cane was an important crop. Brown sugar and New Orleans molasses had a worldwide market as early as 1790. But the methods of manufacture were crude. Each plantation had its own sugar house with primitive crushers for squeezing the juice from the cane. The juice was boiled in shallow open pans and ladled by hand from one pan to the next. As the water evaporated, the juice thickened into molasses. Further evaporation changed the molasses into brown sugar. But now we have white sugar. Today, scientists breed new and better kinds of sugar cane by crossing old varieties with wild cane from the far corners of the world. The flowers of one kind are so placed that their pollen falls upon the flowers of another kind and fertilizes them. The tiny seeds that result, hidden in this light fluff, are planted in carefully prepared soil. Men long trained in scientific plant breeding become very skillful in growing these delicate seedlings. Soon the grass-like seedlings appear. They look alike, but due to the laws of heredity, no two of them are exactly alike. They are transplanted several times, and selection of the more desirable crosses begins. Each bud sprouts and grows a new cane with all the good features of the parent cane. When mature, the improved canes, perhaps only one in thousands is found desirable, are cut so as to leave one or more buds on each piece. They are covered in a shallow trench and the earth packed over them. When cut above the ground in the fall, more canes grow from the roots, a process repeated for several years. This is one of the new disease-resistant varieties developed by the Department of Agriculture. An acre may yield as much as 6,000 pounds of sugar. The hands work hard, but they have great fun working together. Each year, many housemaids and cooks beg leave from their city jobs to go back to the plantation and cut cane. There was a time when all this work was done by men and mules, but now machines do much of the heavy work, loading and hauling to the large mills that have replaced the old plantation sugar houses. The haul to the mill may be by barge, railroads, or by trucks. Huge cranes pick up a whole truckload of cane at a time and put it on conveyors. Powerful engines developing hundreds of horsepower drive the heavy crushers of the modern mill, replacing the oxen or mules that were used in the old days for power. This crusher and the rolls that squeeze the juice from the cane weigh many tons. The juice is piped to the pan room, where the shallow open pans of the old sugar houses have been replaced by huge vacuum evaporators, which boil away the water rapidly at reduced pressure and lower temperatures. The sugar is separated from the liquid molasses by whirling tubs called centrifugals which throw out the liquid, leaving the almost dry brown sugar crystals. In the refinery, the remaining molasses and moisture is removed from the brown sugar, and the clean white sugar of commerce is produced. Machines fill sacks to exact sewing machines, close the bags, They fall onto the conveyor, and so the familiar 10-pound bag is on its way to the corner grocery. Thus, thanks to scientific agriculture and modern mechanical devices, sugar, once an expensive luxury, is now a common commodity on every table. Sugar is a good energy-giving food. Without sugar, we would have no birthday cake, no wedding cake. Without sugar, no soda fountain. No ice cream, no banana split. Without sugar, no bonbons or chocolate creams. And no cane syrup or molasses for our hotcakes. Without sugar, this would indeed be a sour world.